Hello and welcome to this Warhammer 40k video with me Mark from the Xenovids channel. So the channel has done pretty well the last few months and uh, one of the best videos I've done pretty well is our how to choose a fantasy army video. Well, it's done extremely well actually and well, we've put out a lot of Warhammer 40k videos onto the channel and I've had a look and we never actually put out a how to choose a Warhammer 40k army. So it's about time we did. Let's get started. Warhammer 40k is a sci-fi tabletop game set in the 41st millennium. This gothic future setting is an excellent setting for a galaxy spanning war between several very distinctive factions. To help you with your choices it may help to know a little bit about these factions and the history and the story and how it stands to date. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, going over that now. Millions of years ago, a race called the Old Ones were at war with the Necrons. Now this robotic race was extremely powerful and almost completely destroyed the Old Ones. Uh, during this war the Old Ones created the Eldar race. Y you can think of them as Elves in Space. Now this war spanned many, many years and seemed to never end, until the Necrons higher up decided to go into hibernation. Fast forwarding to the almost 41st millennium, mankind had travelled across the stars and had, had colonies across the galaxy on different planets. Unfortunately, the evil gods known as the Gods of Chaos had put large storms around Terra, aka Earth, so no more space travel was possible. No more. And the Gods of Chaos are, well, it would be good to know, they are Korn, Nurgle, and Zeech at this point, and all represent the darkest side of humanity. So, murder and bloodshed, you've got disease, and you've got kind of corruption. You name it, they've got it. And now they live off dark souls, and so murderers and generally very bad people uh, would worship them, and that would... Um, essentially feed them and they could then have more influence over more humans. The Eld Army, while being a highly psychic race, began to hone their skills and explore different aspects of life. They martial arts, art, poetry, but unfortunately this led to some of them enjoying the darker side of life, such as murder, rape and heavy metal music. And this combined with their natural psychic powers began to manifest in a new dark chaos god called Slanesh. And the birth of this god essentially caused a mini Big Bang, which led to 99.999% of the Eldar being completely wiped out. This then led to a rift called the Eye of Terror opening up, um, where the chaos could kind of spill out into this reality and generally do evil things. Uh, imagine there's a giant storm cloud in the galaxy and uh, lightning coming out is demons, essentially. The resulting explosion blew away the storm surrounding Terra and a man called the Emperor decided to go forth and find his uh, children who were off on all these planets and then to genetically enhance them, turn them in into super warriors. And he does this and has great success and so begins to create um, the Space Marines. Unfortunately, the Dark Gods corrupt about half of them, and so uh, the Chaos Space Marines are born. A civil war happens, and the Emperor gets mortally wounded, and now presides on a Golden Throne slash life support machine, which is keeping him alive, and he has little minions that try to psychically communicate with him, and make sure his will is done. Now the Chaos Space Marines go into the Eye of Terror to lick their wounds and pout. After this civil war, new races have begun to emerge, like the swarm-like Tyranids. Think of these as alien meet Zerg with a sprinkling of bugs. The Tau Empire, which is the youngest race who is becoming one of the most technically advanced races in the galaxy and kind of have a theme of anime-esque giant mechanized suits. And the Orcs, yes, Orcs in space. It makes sense, right? Oh, and the Necrons are waking up too, so yeah, in the 41st millennium there is only war. And that about sums it up. 
Now there are many playable races in the 40k universe and in making a decision it is extremely important to take a look at all of the armies. Now at the moment we have, well let's start with the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now this is a technological, technological organization, often known as the Priesthood of Mars. It holds a monopoly of technology knowledge, technological knowledge in the Imperium, and their forge worlds turn out the Imperium's most powerful and advanced weaponry and equipment. Now, the organization's uh, adepts, the tech priests, are vital in maintaining much of the Imperium's more technologically advanced equipment, not at least of which is the Emperor's life-sustaining golden throne. We have the Space Marines, who are genetically modified superhuman soldiers, the elite warriors of the Imperium of Man. Now, the Space Marines are considered one of the most play popular playable armies and one of the strongest in 40k. There are a number of factions of Space Marines, such as Blood Angels, Dark Angels and Space Wolves, um, as well as many others, and they all have different looks and feels to them. Blood Angels are generally Red Marines that enjoy assault-based armies, Dark Angels are green and have a dark, mysterious past. And the Space Wolves are Viking werewolves in space. Grey Knights are the ultimate Space Marine. They are created to combat demons and evil and are rumoured to have the Emperor's DNA in them. The Astra Militarum. This army used to be called the Imperial Guard and veteran old school players will continue to call that until the day they die. The army itself is characterised by being capable of fielding a multitude of lightly armoured average infantry in combination with some of the toughest and most powerful tanks in the game. In the game universe, the Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarium, is a colossal military organisation consisting of trillions of men and women supported by millions of tanks, each from thousands of different worlds and systems within the galaxy. Uh, Imperial Knights are large mechanical robots of war with huge guns. The Adeptus Sororitas are an all-female army of warrior nuns attached to the state church of the Imperium of Man. They are considered to be the opposite to the Warhammer 40k Space Marines who have all an all-male army. Generally they are a little bit weaker in their stats to the Space Marine counterparts, but don't let that put you off. Space Amazonian Nun Warriors. Now that's still pretty deadly. We have the Inquisition. Uh, they act as the secret police of the Imperium, hunting down any and all threats to the stability of the God Emperor's realm. In fiction relating to the games, Inquisitors are usually represented by extremely powerful, intelligent and talented individuals. In the games, Inquisitors are usually powerful combatants with a variety of specialised abilities with a party of followers who improve and protect the Inquisitor. The Chaos Space Marines, or Chaos Marines, are Space Marines who serve the Dark Gods. They are also referred to as the Traitor Legions, primarily in the background material written from the perspective of the Imperium. They have a few different factions following each of their Dark Gods and are an extremely powerful army um, with lots of spiky bits and demons. The Eldar are a race and uh, playable army in the tabletop miniature wargame. They are patterned after the High Elves. So if you know about Elves or see Lord of the Rings and you imagine these kind of Elves are in space. They live long, they're slightly arrogant and they possess great psychic powers and technology. The Eldar once ruled the galaxy and seek to reclaim their old dominions from humanity. However, um, the Eldar are a dwindling population who are on the cusp of an extinction. The Dark Elder are the depraved cousins of the Elder. They kidnap people so that they may torture them and feed off the psychic energies produced by their victims' agony. They're not very nice people. The Necrons are a race of robotic men. They are an ancient race of skeleton-like robots who are awakened from an eons long slumber and fighting to reclaim the galaxy from the younger races. The Orcs are a race and a playable army in the tabletop miniatures wargame. Alongside the Space Marines, Orcs are one of the most iconic elements of Warhammer 40k universe. 
Orcs revel in violence for its own sake. Their entire culture revolves around warfare. They are the oldest, most widespread and persistent of all the Imperium's enemies. And the Orcs even date back to the time of the Eldar, the Old Ones and the Necrons. However, Orcs don't really write history down and so no one would really remember. Their simplistic personalities, reckless tactics and ramshackle technology make them the comic relief characters of the Warhammer 40k universe. However, it is also good for the hobbyist who wants to create their own unique looking army with bits onto tanks and lots of carnage and fun. The Tower Empire um, are one of the youngest races in the 40k universe. The Tower rule a small interstellar empire on the very fringe of the Imperium space. They are a relatively new power on the galactic scene and the Tower dream of uniting all races in the galaxy under their benevolent rule and by force if necessary. Their slogan is the greater good and they want everyone to rule under that and be at peace so there will be no more war. The Tau already rule a number of client races including some annexed human worlds and they have a couple of varieties of aliens within their empire as well. The Tyranids are a race um, of aliens. The Tyranids are aliens from outside of the galaxy who have come to devour all life. One planet at a time. Though they collectively possess a powerful intelligence, they cannot be reasoned with. Tyranids come in diverse forms, each individual having an engine being are engineered to fill a specific role, generally to kill. All of their technology is biological and named in the universe as biomorphs due to their components being alive. Now to the collector or painter of this hobby, you are not restricted to any certain faction or army composition, so you can just pick and choose which models you like, um, giving you the flexibility to enjoy the hobby as you see it. Now each army has its own codex book, which outlines the history and the model range and the individual stats and rules for the models. For the gamer, it will be a difficult decision in choosing which army and codex you want. Games Workshop does tend to make newer codexes slightly more powerful. However, if you have your heart set on an army, then this shouldn't really deter you. And the more you play and the better you get at the game, then um, it shouldn't really matter. So I will go through a simple six step process to help you choose your army. Okay, so number one, mark off what army you do not like the look of. Now it's always best to go with an army you visually like the look of, it will uh, really draw you to the models and help you in imagining how your army is going to look. Step two, now look at the army's visual aspects um, when comprising this army. So you have to imagine having this army and could you see yourself using this army on the battlefield. Um, a good way of doing this is going on sites such as miniwargaming.com, going into a games workshop store and having a look at the armies on display and seeing if you can have a go and play them. Games workshop staff do um, are quite helpful with this and Mini Wargaming do brilliant videos as well as this channel uh, with using different armies um, to showcase the different models. Number three, once you've rounded it down have a look at the story and history. You should by this point have a good idea of which codex and army you like the look of. So grabbing one of the codexes, having a sit down and read and looking at the story could draw you in even more. Number four, this is an optional one, um, but for the competitive gamers it's crucial. Having a look at how powerful it is as an army will help you decide. So there is a tier system in 40k and what I mean by that is some armies are a lot more stronger than other armies out there. So the new Necrons, Space Wolves and Eldar are extremely powerful right now and for a new player it would be quite easy for them to pick the codex up, pick a few models up 
battle and get a good few wins under their belt. So for the competitive player it is good to see what's winning at tournaments, what is doing well at local gaming clubs and how, again having a talk about what other players think are going to be great. Number five. Once you've chosen your codex and the army you like the look of, have a look on the internet to see if there are any tutorials either playing them on their models, on reviews of the models, um, tutorials of painting and to help you find out what in models are good. Uh, 1d4chan.org is a good site for checking out the armies and seeing which models are really good on the table. I like to go on YouTube and typing in um, painting review our painting tutorial of different models to give me a good idea uh, on how different models are and how easy it is to paint them. For example, I find um, Grey Knight models, which are a faction of Space Marines, a lot easier to paint than Harlequins. Harlequins are generally half the size in um, uh, to Grey Knights and are extremely difficult to paint and my current painting skill level wouldn't let me show off the model in the way I would want it and that really puts me off collecting that army but if you are an extremely um, good painter um, there's nothing stopping you collecting an army which is extremely difficult to paint so check out some tutorials um, of how to paint the army you like. Number six. Now this step is all about playtesting your army. Go to a games workshop store, a gaming club, or get your friends involved and just play a game. You may lose, but try to work out why and how you did lose. Discuss how to improve your army and your playstyle, and once you do get that first win with your army, then you should have the bug for the game. There's nothing worse than getting an army and losing all the time and completely putting you off the hobby. Me and Ian on the channel have lots of fun playing and we never get bored of playing Warhammer 40k. We've never got bored in the last 10 years because we know how to have fun whether we're doing a mission from the codex or the rule book or creating a whole narrative campaign of our own introducing our own rules to it but definitely get some gaming under your belt. I hope this has been helpful and if you do use this guide and it does help you please comment in the comment section below and let me know what army you have chosen. My armies in the one before today at the moment are Eldar, Space Wolves, Tyranids, Dark Eldar and Grey Knights. So let me know what you like. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.